What is the NBA doing? Who came up with this schedule for the NBA Finals? Last Thursday, the Dallas Mavericks closed out the Western Conference Finals with a dominating performance against the Wolves, or as Charles Barkley prefers to call them, the Wolves. Charles Barkley might not be calling them anything for long because TNT is about to lose their right to broadcast the NBA to NBC, which... I thought was going to be a great move initially. Obviously, I would rather ESPN lose their broadcast rights to the NBA with TNT and NBC broadcasting the league. But now that I have seen the potential plans for the NBA on NBC, I'm not sure this is a great idea, but we'll get to that more here in just a second. It has been a full week, seven days Since the last game in the NBA playoffs, I'll ask the same question again. What the hell is the NBA doing? Who came up with this schedule? Why are you waiting a full week to start the NBA Finals? Well, KC, the NFL waits two weeks after the conference championships to play the Super Bowl. Uh, There's a huge difference between the NFL and the NBA. The NFL has a massive audience that consists of hardcore fans. The NBA has a dwindling audience that consists mostly of casual fans. You know what casual fans tend to lose quickly? Interest. The NBA has given the casual viewer a full week to completely forget about them. Well, KC, they had to schedule it this way in case the conference finals went seven games. Yeah, but the conference finals didn't go seven games. You mean to tell me that ABC wouldn't have been willing to bump whatever the hell was on their schedule to start the NBA finals on Sunday? What was on ABC Sunday night? American Idol? the diversity edition of America's Funniest Home Videos. Just think about what has happened in the last week. There was already little to no momentum heading into the NBA Finals. Ratings for the Western Conference Finals were a complete disaster. Series averaged 6.7 million viewers, down 18% compared to last year when the Nuggets swept Bron Bron and Tony Davis. Even though I think the NBA playoffs have been great this year, the rest of the country can't seem to find the interest. NBA is averaging just over 4 million viewers for the playoffs, down 13% compared to last year. If you remove the Kobe seasons from 2020 and 2021, this year was the least watched Western Conference final since 2013. That year, the painfully boring Spurs swept the painfully boring Grizzlies. This year... The West was filled with stars. Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving. The redemption story with Kyrie Irving. This is one of the best stories in sports right now. This dude was written off. He was labeled difficult to work with. Ever since he forced his way out of Cleveland, ever since he did whatever the hell it took to get away from Bron Bron, Kyrie Irving's career has been a disaster. Boston, disaster. Brooklyn, disaster. Last year in Dallas, disaster. The comeback of Kyrie Irving, this should be one of the leading stories right now in the mainstream media. But for some reason, no one is talking about it. Why? Maybe it's because Adam Silver decided to wait seven days to start the NBA Finals. Just think about what's happened in the last week. What has been the leading story this past week in the mainstream media? How many times have you heard about the NBA in the past few days? I do this for a living. You know how many NBA stories have been in my newsfeed this week? Damn near zero. The NBA has been completely outshined by the WNBA dump. The NBA, in the most important part of their season, they have been completely overshadowed by a young white girl from Iowa. I can't believe I'm saying this. The WNBA has the biggest superstar right now in basketball. Hell, I have seen more headlines about Angel Reese this week than I have about the NBA Finals. Angel Reese! The soon-to-be forgotten one. The incredibly unknown Chen Carter, who for some reason her teammates refer to her as Kennedy. This unknown role player, she has received more mainstream media coverage this week than the NBA Finals. It is absolutely unbelievable. Yesterday, 
One of my long-term viewers emailed me asking my prediction for ratings for the NBA Finals. Now, the good news for the NBA, ratings can't get much worse. Since 2020, the NBA Finals has averaged 10.3 million viewers. Well, KC, that number is great! Yeah, that number would be great for Major League Soccer. It would be great for the polished turd known as the World Series, which has averaged under 10 million viewers in two of the last four years. Which, by the way, if you want to look at this positively, at least the NBA isn't being overshadowed right now by Major League Baseball. Honestly, though, it's hard to predict ratings for the finals this year. Past few years, it's been relatively easy. Everyone knew ratings for Nuggets Heat would be in the pooper. 2020 and 2021, when the NBA was consuming the woke wiener and fighting the good fight against mythical racism, we all knew that their ratings were going to struggle. This year, though, it's a bit different. To me, this is one of the more captivating matchups in the last few years, but I'm a diehard fan of the NBA. Real question is, is a Boston-Dallas matchup enough to capture the interest of the casual viewer? Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, they're big stars in the NBA, but are they really mainstream draws? If they were, they would have drawn big ratings in the Western Conference Finals. And don't even get me started with the complete lack of star power in Boston. The only draw in Boston is the name on the front of the jersey. Go ask your wife. Go ask your wife who Jalen Brown is. She will think he is the chief baker in the woke cafeteria famous for his pound my brown cake. Ask your wife to describe Jason Tatum. Oh, he's the lead attorney at Tatum and Tatum. He's the guy on the commercial who chases the ambulance. In terms of basketball, this is a great matchup for the NBA. The problem is there's no story. There are no storylines heading into the NBA Finals, which is probably why the media is ignoring it. The reason the WNBA is so captivating right now, it has nothing to do with basketball. If the WNBA had to rely on basketball to draw an audience, there wouldn't be one. On the court, the WNBA product sucks. Some of the worst basketball you'll ever see. People are being drawn to the dump by the drama off the court. Caitlin Clark being targeted by opposing dump divers, her teammates refusing to come to her defense, the jealousy and resentment of Katie Rue throughout the WNBA. Basically, Caitlin Clark is in a rivalry with the entire league. Rivalries, drama, bad blood, that creates controversy. And controversy creates ratings. What is the biggest storyline going into the NBA Finals? Who doesn't like each other? What is going to draw the casual viewer and make him interested in watching this? Simple answer is nothing. There are no rivalries right now in the NBA. I think we are going to see another abysmal performance in the NBA Finals. If the series goes six or seven games, maybe the final two or three games will boost the average, but I think the Mavs will take the series in five games. Celtics haven't really been tested all season. Damn sure haven't been tested in the playoffs. This has been the easiest run to the finals in recent memory. Every team Boston has faced in the playoffs has been injured. So, I think we'll probably see 12, 12 and a half million viewers for the NBA Finals. But earlier this morning, it was announced that NBC will be broadcasting the NBA twice a week in prime time on Tuesday and Sunday nights. Throughout the regular season, NBC will be responsible for airing about 50 games, which is great. That's great. I hope they can recreate some of the magic that the NBA and NBC had back in the 90s. But here's the problem. There's going to be an additional 50 games broadcast exclusively on Peacock. At this point, it's unclear if these will just be regular season games or if it's going to include early round games in the NBA playoffs. I don't understand what the hell Adam Silver is doing here. Well, KC, it's simple. The NFL was a huge success on Amazon and Peacock. The NBA has a younger audience that doesn't have cable. Yeah, um, last I checked, NBC wasn't on cable, it's free TV. 
The reason the NFL was a big success on Amazon and Peacock, it's because people don't want to miss NFL games. Even when your team isn't playing, you don't want to miss the NFL because a lot of people are betting on the games. Completely different in the NBA. I worked at a sports book for years. Out of all the major sports, the NBA generated the least amount of interest. Hell, we had more guys betting on Major League Baseball than we did on the NBA. The NFL has a loyal audience that will go out of their way to watch their product. NBA doesn't have that. Hell, they're struggling to draw ratings during the playoffs. Do you really think people that don't have Peacock are going to sign up just to watch the NBA regular season? They're not even giving NBC their premier package. Once again, Adam Silver is giving the A package to ESPN, the network that offers the absolute worst coverage of the league. Did you guys know ESPN will be accomplishing another first during the NBA Finals? <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing. You're going to love this. Doris Burke, she will become the first woman to call the NBA Finals. Well, this is amazing. Woohoo! Yes, yes, yes. The same Doris Burke who constantly gets in the way of the excellent duo of JJ Reddick and Mike Breen. That's all you needed for the finals. Give me J.J. Reddick. Give me Mike Breen. There's no need for a third person, but you guys know how much ESPN loves a first. This past season, one of my biggest complaints with the NBA was the lack of availability. This league makes it damn near impossible to watch their product. With 50 games going to Peacock, just think about what the NBA is now asking of their fan base. Gotta have cable or pay for ESPN Plus to watch the best games of the week. Gotta pay for Bally Sports or NBA League Pass to watch your local team. And if you live in the local market, you gotta pay for a VPN to watch your local team through league pass because the NBA blacks out the games. And now, the NBA is asking you to pay for an additional subscription to watch games on Peacock. <laughs> Adam Silver, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you don't have this kind of leverage. But give me your prediction. Give me your prediction. What do you think ratings will be for the NBA Finals? For diehard fans of the NBA, I think this is a great matchup on paper, but will Celtics-Mavs, will that be enough to generate interest with the casual viewer? Also, has the WNBA overshadowed the NBA in terms of mainstream interest? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. And I'll see you guys later.